All right. I think we are good to go. Give me one second, guys. Um, having some issues here. That's why I'm running a little bit late. My AirPods just won't connect. And I was trying to make sure the background music was good. Um, sounds like sounds like it's all good. And I think, uh, I think I'm just going to do without these tonight. I, I don't know what's been going on. I've been having some Bluetooth issues with my computer recently. So I do apologize for that. Um, anyways, cheers. But as you guys know, I've been getting into, you know, this stuff just a little bit not too much just a little bit tonight is uh you know and last night i guess this is a bottle i kept in the fridge overnight is a, a little barolo 2018 silvio grasso you know just just getting into some stuff here been exploring italian red wines recently so some cabernet sauvignon cabernet franc uh you know 100 nebbiolo stuff so barolo uh more generic stuff than that um yeah so you know just kind of getting into the whole wine thing a little bit. So I'm going to have one more sip of this, and then we're going to move over to the star of tonight's show, which is going to be Blade and Bow. Had to rhyme that. All right, cheers, guys. So let me know if you are going to be sipping along this evening, and uh, let me know if you're hanging out in chat tonight, who, who, the, uh, who we have in chat this evening. Say hello. Let me know that you're here. Uh, if you guys do have a bottle of Blade and Bow, go grab it. And I have a couple ideas for comparisons. Um, I, so in front of me here, I have a I have a bottle of Blanton's and a bottle of Larceny, just straight up Larceny. I was just thinking of things that I might be able to compare to Blade and Bow, either at a similar price point, a lower or higher, like just stuff that's in the same proof and possibly flavor profile range. Um, <laughs> Jeb, yeah, man, I, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do that probably sooner than later, unfortunately, um, because yeah, putting it in the fridge, pulling it out, even after one day, I feel like it starts to de develop balsamic notes. I, I don't know. Uh, and maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much because I'm expecting it to get that way after too many days. Um, but anyways, guys, uh, I just picked up this blade and bow today. All right. So this is not a bottle I've ever owned. I think I've only tried Blade and Bow one time, and I have like a memory of what that tasted like in my brain, and I don't know if that's going to line up to, to this, and you can see that I've already opened the bottle, but I just opened it earlier and let it sit, get some air into it. I have not poured anything out of this. I haven't tasted it yet, so tonight's tasting is 100% new to me, except for the one time I tried this like over a year ago. Ooh. Dustin Pullman says, special reserve might be comparable. Actually, I think I have one right here. Give me just a second, guys. Let me grab this Weller. Um, maybe. Maybe. There it is. That's a good call, Dustin. That's a good call. So let's get this thing out. <clears throat> um, Okay. So let's see. Let's see who's in the chat. John Cloud says, yes, once again, I'll be able to drink along. Good to see you back, John. I'm glad that you've become a regular on the channel. It's awesome, man. And as you guys are jumping in tonight, as you grab your blade and bow, if you got it, uh, hit that like button on your way. And I'm going to go ahead and pour out a glass of blade and bow. Get this thing, you know, airing out just a little bit. Still not sure why my, uh, my AirPods won't connect to my computer. It's just a mystery to me. So, a little unfortunate here, but it's not the end of the world. I just like to listen to the jazz with you, you know? It's more fun that way. Anyways. Um, James will be in chat as long as the battery lasts. We'll continue to follow along on the big screen. Nice, man. Matt Porter's in the house. Good to see you, dude. Copper Wolf. Nebbiolo D's nuts, says Aiden. <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. Um, what is up, Joe? Coach Schmeling's in the house. Aiden says, uh, I haven't bought a Blade & Bow because I have no reason to believe I'll like it at all for 50 bucks. I did look at the bottle that says it's a weather nine times on the bottle. <laughs> DC says the key tag is cool. And Paul is Super Chat working tonight. Paul, I think Super Chat should be on. No no need, Paul. I mean, I know, man, you're the most supportive person on the channel. But, you know, no need to, uh, to Super Chat, man. I mean, no, no giveaways tonight. But I do appreciate you, of course. Um, let me get this Weller out of here for now. Let's get into this blade and bow thing. So, 
in in you know talking about what Aiden is mentioning in the chat, <laughs> Paul P. Man, don't spoil it for me. <laughs> I have the best uh, <laughs> the best hopes for tonight. Don't spoil it for me. So in keeping with what Aiden was talking about, this thing is, so it's a 91 proof for 45.5% ABV. It's got the Blanton's thing going on with the keys, five different numbered keys, and then you get into the, some club and they put your name up on a plaque, I believe, or you know something along those lines at the distillery. Um, this is a Diageo-owned brand. Pretty sure about that. And bottled by Stitzel Weller Distilling, but it doesn't have it doesn't tell us where this was actually distilled at. And so I'm not entirely sure. And if you guys in the chat know, feel free to drop it in here if you have any insider info. Um, now they claim that yeah, there's the, the name Stitzel Weller's all over this thing. They claim that there is some old Stitzel Weller bourbon in the blend here in this kind of Solera um, way of doing things where they just keep pouring things into a Solera vat essentially. You know, at that point, it's just a... <laughs> here, this is what's funny about it. Let me read this. I saw it on here earlier. Matured using the rigorous... <laughs> rigorous. Solera aging method, preserving our rarest whiskey stocks in the spirit of Stutzweller. You're not preserving shit. You're just wasting it. <laughs> you're pouring it into a Solera vat with presumably young, inexpensive whiskey. Don't waste Stutzweller bourbon. So anyways, it's all marketing. It's all that kind of shtick, as you can tell by the key and all that. So that's my first impression going into this. I haven't smelled it, haven't tasted it. The color, wow, it's a big pour. We're not going to get through all that tonight. The color is just like a kind of a bright golden color, I guess. <laughs> yeah, John, you're right. You're right. I actually, when I took that off earlier, I was like, this foil could cut you. <laughs> I mean, it's it's dangerous stuff. So let's get into the nose here. Let me know as you guys sip along what you're getting as well. I would be curious to to kind of go back and forth with you on this. I have the best hopes for this one. And in Ohio, this thing is now $59.99. So <laughs> state controlled pricing. All right, here we go. Let's check it out on the nose. All right, so first impression. God, I hate doing this without the music in my ears. The music makes it so much better. But now I realize how loud I talk. So I apologize to Sarah, I guess. Uh, this thing smells of honey. Yeah, it, it's it's super basic. It's it's grain sweetness, corn grain sweetness. It's honey. It's white pepper. Dude, Matt, I know. The word rigorous is the best part of all of it. It's... It was so rigorous to take this teeny little eyedropper of Stitzelweller bourbon and drop one drop into this vat and forever say that all of these bottles contain Stitzelweller. <laughs> it's rigorous, dude. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Definitely uh, some, some bright pear notes in here. It really kind of complements the honey profile of it which is it's definitely bright it's definitely sweet it smells basic one-dimensional but sweet uh and, and bright so it's going to be appealing to i would imagine newer whiskey drinkers um you know maybe a good introductory pour for that reason and you're also not dealing with a ton of oak in this thing either you know if there's any oak showing it's just enough to add a little bit of like white pepper spice to kind of round out some of the grain notes and make them a little more honeyed. But by and large, this thing is, you know, smelling like a four to six year old, very sweet whiskey, uh, you know, with, with a couple of brighter pear and like maybe like yellow apple, you know, fruit kind of notes. <laughs> All right, let's taste this thing. Cheers. Let me know what you guys think about this. Am I, is there any is there any note on the nose? Let's say that you're getting that you think I'm missing. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a sip now. Well, I need to have a second sip of that. It's a little sour on the palate, like. It's got it's got some of those sweet honey grain notes. 
little kick of that white pepper spice. There's, it's, this is not a cinnamon spice. This is not like a, any kind of spice that has a flavor or like an aromatic type profile to it. It's just straight up prickly white pepper. All right, I'm going to go in for a second sip. All right. So, yeah, it's super simple. That's not a $50 or $60 bottle, unfortunately. I mean, it's such a simple bourbon. I don't know. There's something about it, though, that I like, and um, so I'm going to look through the chat. Now, Paul says it gives me a funk smell. There is something in here I can't quite place that I actually like about it, and Paul, I think it might be what you're referring to as a funk on the nose. You know, I think it, you know what it smells like? It smells like over-stewed fruits or... um, like you left a fruit cup out in the sun or something like that. It's got that kind of funky, overripe fruit thing going on. In the wine world, I think, as I've been watching videos and learning things, they would say bruised apple, I feel like. <laughs> Which is, yeah, that's too speci- that's too much for me. I'm going to say you left a fruit cup out in the sun, which is more descriptive. But, you know, I don't, what, what the heck's a bruised apple? I mean, come on. I'm not experienced with my bruised apples. But I think I like the funky fruit component of this, uh, as DC is saying here. Mine is young, rough edges, simple, and funky fruit. I would agree with all this. And I like the funky fruit because it adds just enough. And I think maybe that's what I was saying about it being sour. It adds just enough of something to the palate to make you want to come back to it. Like, some people might just not like that, and that's cool. To me, it's it's like, what was that? You know, and you go back to it. And it adds a little dimension, a little edge to to the flavor profile. And because it's so simple, it's like, well, okay, this is like, this is like a, again, I, I refer to these as like the session IPAs of whiskey, but it's like a session IPA that has a little extra something, something, a little extra hoppiness to it, or a little extra something on the profile that's going to keep you coming back and, and have a little bit of a crispness. I think this whiskey has a little bit of that for me. John, uh, I missed this. So, red apple peel. Yeah, I could see that for sure. I said like a yellow apple or a pear. I could see it. I, I, if this was a $25 bottle, I'd really like it. I, th- I think. Joe, I think Cam just called this a simple jack of bourbon. Um... All right, Paul says, cheap whiskeys like this take me back to sneaking sips of black velvet from my dad's bar when I was 12 and being disgusted. That shit is gross, though. I mean, come on. (laughs) Abused. Bruised and abused. Abused apples. That's funny, Matt. Matt called my blend an abused apple and blend again. Oh, okay, there we go. That's the reference. That's pretty funny. (laughs) So it's Castle and Key that's going into here, says Aiden, going into the Solera vat. But but someone should fact check. Okay. Yeah, um, I haven't had, besides the new Blue Run stuff, I haven't had any of the Castle and Key distillate. And that's contract distilled. I don't know if this would be contract distilled or like if Castle and Key has a specific mash bill that they themselves are distilling for themselves. If this is just basically sourced out of that lot. If that would were, were to be the case, you know, not sure what the mash bill is, and I don't think it's disclosed. And I guess you can't really disclose the mash bill if you've added Stitzel Weller juice at any point of the Solera process, which would only be the very beginning, I would think. Um, you probably then can't throw that mash bill up there. So, yeah, Aiden. Yeah, grain of salt, grain of salt. Okay, 
it's time to do a few comparisons because there's not much more to say about this thing. I don't hate it, but for 60 bucks that I, I actually paid 65 after tax today. Oh man, I wish I had that money back. <laughs> um, okay. So let's let's think about some alternatives here at various price points and see what the deal is. Okay, so um, I have a few bottles here, and I need to grab one more glass. So here's the thing. I I want to compare this, and, and shout out to Dustin for the Weller Special Reserve recommendation. And guys, if you have any other recommendations of whiskeys that I might have in this room to throw into this comparison, please let me know. I'm going to go through this rapid fire very quickly. The Larceny is interesting to me because I was just thinking about something around the proof point. Larceny is 92. This is 91. I think that's fair. Larceny is weeded. The Stitzel Weller, I would imagine this is a... Uh, a st I, why I said Stitzel Weller because I looked at the, the neck tag. This is Blade and Bow. This is barely Stitzel Weller at all. <laughs> probably. And this is probably a rye to bourbon, I would think. This is weeded. Just, you know, throwing that out there. So is this. And Blanton's. I hear a lot of people talking about Blade and Bow as a, as a semi-affordable because it's really almost the same MSRP as Blanton's. But an alternative to Blanton's where Bland is 93 proof, 92, 90, 91. So we're in the same range. And so we're going to go through this comparison really quickly. Paul P., that's a, that's a very good point. Because of the honey notes, monkey shoulder, I know why you're saying that. I don't think that's going to work. That's That bottle's in my basement. I don't want to run down and grab it. I know why you'd say that, though, and that's that's funny and it makes sense. Dustin says, OG Buffalo Trace. Honestly, my mine's in the basement. I have a store pick up here, but that's going to blow all these away because I have a great Buffalo Trace store, picked, uh, store pick. Yeah, Jeb, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here and say don't buy it. Now, if you find this whiskey, for some reason, if you go to like a Walmart or any place that might heavily discount stuff, if you would like find this on the shelf at 25 bucks, I'd buy it, you know? But 25, 30 tops is where this whiskey is in my head. To be 50 regularly, and now in Ohio, 60, because the state's starting to gouge prices, which is, like, what the fuck is the benefit of having a state-run system if they're going to keep raising prices? No, I mean, sorry, pardon my my language. But that, that really, that really, you know, kills me. Um, that I know we're seeing inflation across the board, but man, at some point, the benefits of a state-run system just totally go out the window if you start inflating prices like that. Uh, Paul, 10 cup, 10, just personally, proof wise, it makes sense as a comparison, but it's just the flavor profile is so nice that I don't think it's going to quite work in here. All right, let's get these poured very quickly. I just, I couldn't think of like, you know, Elijah Craig, straight up Elijah Craig was almost going to be the focus of today's taste along. And at the last minute I was like, let's do blade and bow. I was in the store today. I was playing two, uh, kitty concerts this morning and in elementary schools, the symphony sometimes would go out and play these kiddie shows. And I was between concerts and it felt a little bit wrong to run in a liquor store between kids shows, but I did. And I was looking around and it was the delivery day for this particular store I was in. And they had skids of freaking, oh geez, I don't want to break this cord. They had skids of Sazerac rye, which in Ohio is not common uh, by any means. So I should have bought one, but I was like, no, I'm just going to find one bottle and it was going to either be straight up Elijah Craig and maybe Elijah Craig Rye 2 or this Blade and Bow. So maybe next week or, or the next taste along, I'll do Elijah Craig and Elijah Craig Rye side by side. Dustin, that's a good one. That's a that's a good idea, actually. But I, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it at these, I think, because, again, I think that profile is just so different. Thinking about stuff that might be similar profiles. All right. So now let's go first, go back to the blade and bow quickly. Man, those young corn notes on there. That's not what I remember, actually. The last blade and bow I tried would have been at least a year ago, maybe even two years ago. And I remember it actually having some really nice vanilla notes to it and being, again, all to my memory, being a little creamier and a little more of a fuller profile, not so young. 
And so if any of you have an older bottle, maybe you can speak to that, but I, I can't at this point. So now let's move on to Weller Special Reserve. So this is a $22 bottle. Secondary really should be 40 bucks, which is still not that much of a markup, to be honest with you, because some people in stores try to gouge this up to 100 so let's just call this right now. Let's be let's be conservative and call it a thirty-five dollar bottle, maybe forty, if we go like regular secondary pricing on this. Okay. So let's check this out, which carries the Weller name, you know. And actually, well, none of these things are really sets of Weller. Let's be honest. Yeah. So. What's nice about this is you actually get those dark fruit notes that you commonly would find in Buffalo Trace products. That that little bit of candied grape. In this case, it's super soft because it's a weeded bourbon. So it's soft. There's a little bit of like Big League Chew. And big League Chew, you know, the grape stuff, but also just regular double bubble, like bright bubble gum. A little bit of that in here too. And you can smell just a hint of like a sweet, damp oak which is nice. So side by side on the nose. I could see people, I could see on the nose, people actually preferring the blade and bow to the Weller Special Reserve because it has just a little more life to it. It jumps out of the glass. Probably if it's a ride bourbon, that would be the reason why. It's only one proof point difference, but I think the spice really makes it jump out of the glass. So I'm going to taste the Weller now. Weller has a lot more spice on the palate than I would have ever remembered or expected for this. You know, this bottle gets a lot of hate. A lot of people can't find it. But a lot of people just say it's cat pee or, you know, they talk a lot of smack about it. I think it's a great sipper. I think Green Weller, still to this day for me, is a great sipper. And yeah, certainly rougher around the edges on the blade and bow, but there's something that's kind of like, it's got a little like attitude, a little a little spunk, which I, uh, you know, whatever. That's close. That could go either way for me. So whether or not Weller is a, an alternative, you know, obviously availability is an issue. Price can be an issue depending, but... They're close to me. I prefer Weller on the nose, but the palette, you know, the blade and bow might might win out on the palette for me. Let me check the chat, guys. Sorry, I'm, I'm not keeping up here. Aiden says, uh, and, and I am going to try to be out of here by 9. Well, I'm not going to make it by 9. I know the Junkies and some other channels going to go live, certainly 2, 10, 90. Uh, people going live at 9. I'll, I'll be done as soon as I can. Not going to go over more than 5 to 10 minutes, so... Yeah, Aiden, good point here. You know, prices did, just to get the bottles in the store has raised. For sure, for sure. Paul, so I pulled out the weeders um, because I was thinking about flavor profile from what I remembered from the last time I tried Blade and Bow, which, I, again, I said was one to two years ago. I was thinking about flavor profile, and I remember it being kind of sweet, light, soft, you know, this kind of thing. This one, to me, is a is younger and grainier and a little sharper than I remember. So I was going off of memory on that. So maybe not a good call, but I also wanted to think about proof and alternatives to price point because this is 50 to 60. Larceny is going to be 25. Weller's going to be anywhere from 25 to 40 all the way up to 80. But let's, again, let's call this 40. And then Blanton's 70 up to 120, you know, depending on where you're at and what you see. So... I, I'm trying to kind of get a cross section here. Yeah, Peter, maybe Blanton's will finally win a, a flight, you know. Weller is it's just sweeter on the palate. Just sweeter on the palate, a little smoother. Jay, I have no idea. <laughs> Let's go on to the larceny. This is maybe the one I'm most interested in because it's so widely available. To compare it to the blade and bow. All right. See, who was just saying that? I think it was Paul, right? Yeah, Paul P. 
Paul, I think there are actually some pretty remarkable similarities between the Blade and Bow and the Larceny. The Larceny has just a little more of that Heaven Hill nuttiness, that more caramel, like like honey peanut, you know, honey roasted peanut is what I want to say, edge to it. But they're actually really close in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I think that closeness is the honey note for, from both of them, just in different ways. The Larceny is a softer, a softer profile because there's no rye, but yeah. And if you guys have this, if you have Larceny and Blade and Bow, it's a good comparison, I think. Paul, you tasted this already a year or two ago. Yes, Paul, in the middle of a bunch of uh, pours. And I buy stuff so I can taste it here on the channel. You know, I, I would like to have a bottle of Blade & Bow so I can do a formal review of it later. So, you know, is uh, is a formal review video of Blade & Bow going to make me back the $60 plus tax I would spend on the bottle? Probably not, you know. <laughs> but it is what it is. You know, you got to have these things. And for me, it's about also... Knowing the profiles of these whiskeys for blinds, training my palate, alternatives so I can speak to it if I ever, you know, lead tastings or talk to friends, give recommendations, whatever. So there's a little more to it for me than just feeling like I wasted 60 bucks, which I do feel in some ways like like that. But, you know, I did say smoother, John. <laughs> Sorry. So I think larceny to me. I think Larceny might might top this Blade and Bow. That Blade and Bow has a has a nice bite to it. Like for how young it is, that white pepper, that graininess gives it this bite. That you know, it's 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 nice in some ways. In other ways, it's just you could just chalk it up to being young. There we go. Use it to help prepare to defend the Matt Madness title. Exactly. All right. And now on to the Blantons. Because people always cite Blade and Bow as being a Blantons alternative, I thought this would be a nice comparison as well. This, is, this would be hard. If I had to rank these, it's really tough between the Stitzel. Sorry. I keep calling it Stitzel because it says it on the neck tag. The Blade and Bow, the Weller, the Larson. It's, it's a hard ranking for me. They're all pretty darn close. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any of these, if you're just drinking the Blade and Bow or any of these, let me know what you're thinking. Blade and Bow, John likes it on the nose. Yeah, because when you're in a flight, for instance, up to this Blanton's, which I haven't smelled yet, it, it's like, if you're blind, what might stand out more on the nose? What's going to jump out of the glass? To me, it's the Blade and Bow. What am I going to subjectively like better Maybe the Weller, because there's a little bit of this dark fruit note that you don't get from the other two. And then you have to kind of ask yourself, uh, if I were trying to remove myself and think objectively about this, what is actually the better whiskey? That's a tough call. And then I might go to the Larceny because it's more balanced just across the board, whereas the Weller feels very, very simple, and the Blade and Bow feels very young, although it still might be the most brawny of the whiskeys that you're tasting so this is what's hard about rating rating pours you know it's really hard to take objective uh, objectivity and subjectivity and try to figure out where where to go with these things and to even know when you are being objective or subjective i think it's hard for us in the whiskey world because we don't have a like a systematized thing that we base things on um you know, maybe like the Whiskey Tribe guys, like the whiskey marketing thing, maybe they have some system or, you know, WSET might have with their spirits system, they might have some sort of tasting regimen or, or way of discussing these things. But because it's not really codified for us, it's hard to be objective about these things. Yeah, Jeb, I, you know, I find myself every couple of months just having a period where I have to be 100 proof and under. And even 100 sometimes feels hot for me. Uh, I'm just... 
it's like it, you're, we're all just so inundated with cast strength bourbon. So, <laughs> Aiden, you keep that four square, man. I still can't get into the rum stuff. All right, let's go to this Blanton's next to the Blade and Bow. Now we're talking a ride mash bill, high ride mash bill from Buffalo Trace. This is a store pick, so keep that in mind. Yeah, I can. The similarities are. It's similar. B Blade and Bow smells like Blanton's. It's like three years younger. Yeah, that's what I would say. All right, I'm going to taste the Blade and Bow one more time. It's just the. It's so much spikier than I remember the first time that I tried Blade and Bow. So much spikier. And now the blends. They're they're very similar. So here's the here's the test now for me. If I did half blade and bow and half weller. Now we're just now we're just doing science. Now we're just doing a little science before we before we wrap it up. There we go. Half and half, blade and bow and weller. Because I think the weller might give the blade and bow a little bit of a like a more round profile and some of those darker notes that Blanton's has might add the impression of age to it. And, uh, and the Blade and Bow is going to give it that kick that the Blanton's has from the high rye mash bill. Let's see how close these are now. Let it sit for just a second. Yeah, Keith, I would put this in the class of benchmark for about 20 bucks. Yeah, to me, I, I really feel like if you could cut the cost way down on the Blade and Bow, it would make a lot of sense for me. And I wonder, like, we have the Blade and Bow 22, which I would imagine is all Stitzel Weller stuff, right? I mean, maybe not, but... I haven't ever looked at the label or, or what's assumed to be in that blend. But you have that, and then you have regular Blade and Bow, which is probably just going to continue to either get younger or maybe it's hit hit that point of where it's at, which is very young, I would imagine, from the way it smells and tastes. There's no middle ground. So, like, would Blade and Bow be able to put out at some point a 10-year that could warrant a 50 or $60 price tag. Well, if they did and they age dated it, it would surely be over a hundred bucks. I would imagine given the price tag of this, but it's an interesting question. I think because there's just, it's such a weird like blade and bow. Think about that. It's such a weird line. Uh, Elijah Craig has Elijah Craig. It has a rye. It has Elijah Craig barrel proof. And then you get Elijah Craig 18 and previously all the higher age stated releases. This is just blade and bow and a 22 year old blade and bow. <laughs> so this is crazy, but on the nose, a 50 50 blend of blade and bow and Weller special reserve is almost indiscernible from Blanton's. It is so, so close. In a in a blind, I might mistake those for the same pour. Wow. The Weller completely rounded out the rough edges of the blade and bow. And there's just a little, little like hint or whisper in the background. I said whisper in my last review video, sorry rehashing that of of spice and youth now to the Blantons well I don't know man I might like that Blant that blade and bow and Weller blend over the Blantons honestly so interesting comparison um so let's wrap this up Give some final thoughts here. First and foremost, Blade and Bow, heavily overpriced. I'm a little sad that I bought it. 
I, I would love to know where this whiskey is from if it is in fact Castle and Key so I could kind of get a handle on on what that distillate is and you know I would love to know how old most of this stuff is in the Solera system the rigorous Solera system as they say on the bottle if this thing was down between 20 and 30 bucks let's just put it that way I think it would be a buy anything over 30 bucks would be a sin and at this point 50 to 60 I I would say it's a it's a hard pass but if you do happen to want to try it and you do happen to have some availability of Weller Special Reserve in your area, blend these things together. I did a 50-50 tonight. You might even try a 60 Weller and a 40 Blade and Bow because that's going to get you kind of close or really, really close to the profile of Blanton's. And this is a single barrel. Uh, sorry, a, a, a store pick. <laughs> They're all single barrels. And this is a really, a pretty good store pick of all the ones that I've tried. So... The fact that that is 5%, 7% different from this after you blend them, it's really close. If you end up with these two bottles, experiment with the blend. It's really cool. Uh, I think out of all of these things, though, a lot of people don't like Larceny. I'm learning more and more that I kind of like Larceny. And it really, as compared to the Blade & Bow for 25 bucks, is probably the best buy that you're looking at right now um so i think that's where i'm at with all these things let me check the chat one one more time yeah aiden when special reserves doing heavy lifting for a bottle twice its price that's a little depressing well i think i agree with you but i also think like as much as weller products are extremely overrated like to me foolproof is not good foolproof is just young sharp high proof whiskey and thinking about thinking about paying anything over 50 bucks for it hurts my heart um antique 107 fine i still think it's overhyped this stuff even though it's got the weller name i think it's kind of underrated you know for what it's worth so it is a shame that it's doing the heavy lifting for blade and bow but i don't think that's a i think the commentary here on that is that blade and bow is just overpriced and and it's all marketing bullshit you know <clears throat> Paul uh just tried the larceny they do share some similarities although yeah noticeable nut and sweetness on the larceny yeah I I'm I'm digging the larceny funkiness though the wheat funk on the larceny you know what's crazy is <clears throat> not to go on a tangent here we have 45 people left in the chat so thank you all first and foremost for being here and if you're watching the replay i appreciate you uh hit hit that like button last final plug i promise i have a sample of 1970s stitzel weller and i keep referencing this in videos and in live streams and stuff toshi bake uh who is in the chat quite often sent me this sample of 1970s stitzel weller and there there was just a note in that and in some other dusties too that i picked up on and it's kind of hard to describe. Like most people would call it wheat funk because it's a Weller product. And wheat funk varies between bottles. Maker's Mark obviously has their own kind of wheat funk. Heaven Hill Wheat, Weeded Products has their own. In my opinion, um, you know, Buffalo Trace Weeders don't have like a wheat funk. They just have a sweetness. It's not funky though. So it kind of varies depending on what I imagine on the distillery, you know, the process, the kind of wherever they're sourcing their wheat, whatever the variables are. This Larceny small batch, after tasting a lot of dusty weeders over the last six months, especially that 70s Stitzel Weller, it has similarities. Weirdly enough, it's not a perfect bottle by any means, but I think Larceny is uh, heavily underrated. And I think Larceny C922 is one of the best bottles I had in, in in 2022 i think th that batch was incredible and the other larcenies are not good <laughs> so dustin i've had a couple of these and i don't like them uh at six to seven years old i don't like them for the boone county i know that their stuff just hit nine years old some of those barrels that they've got sitting of the mgp i would love to try a nine year but I, the six and sevens I've tried have just, it's like Weller foolproof. It's just really sharp. 
I think wheat weeded bourbons need more age than yeah, pretty much any other thing. Like rye whiskey needs the least age. Rye bourbon is next, and then like high rye bourbon. Uh, sorry, rye whiskey needs the least age, then high rye bourbon, and then just like straight up normal rye amounts bourbon, and then like wheat weeded bourbon needs the most age. Uh, and then wheat whiskey needs even more age or it needs a double barrel, which, you know, we saw the heavy char wheat whiskey at 11 years old come from Parker's Heritage. Makes sense. It's got a good age on there. It's got heavy char barrels. You know, it just depends on the, the grain percentages you're using. But I think weeded stuff needs more age. Um, yeah. So Boone County is is no exception to that. Or MGP weeded bourbon is no exception to that for me. Oh, Dustin, dude, that would be... You'd be my hero. Because I've been seeing those pop up. But 250 on secondary, after knowing that I don't like the six year and the seven years, is like, man, that's tough. But if I could try a sample, that would be really cool. Jeb, let me grab that Final thing I'm going to do on this stream. I know this is not supposed to be more than 30 minutes, but hey, let's just, I'm getting into the weeds. Any excuse to drink right now, Larceny C922? I'm going to take it. I think it's, I think it's great stuff. Honestly, I cannot believe that the Weller and Blade and Bow blend got so close to a Blanton store pick. I cannot believe that. It's it's almost indiscernible. It actually might be better because there's a little bit of that spikiness and that spice from the Blade and Bow in that Weller profile. So, all right. Last thing, let's water down some Larceny C922 and see how it compares to regular old Larceny. Oh, it smells so good when it's not watered down. That's such a good bourbon. But just because it's so good at barrel strength... You know, a lot of barrel strength things after you water them down, even if you water them down slowly, a lot of them do not hold up. So the blend, the, the blend matters and the proof point of that blend, the final proof point matters as well. <clears throat> and I just watered this down very quickly and it, it might have just completely shocked it, so... Let's check this out. Larceny C922. It still might be a little hot as compared to the regular Larceny, but I put a fair bit of water in there. Yeah, Jeb, good point. I'm going to take a sip of water before I, I taste it. Tim Tam Slam. Um, second thoughts on Bardstown Origin Bottled and Bond. Still believe it to be disjointed. I tasted it on a Patreon-only live, uh, I guess that was two days ago, and I still wasn't a big fan. Ironically enough, the fact that you're saying that, it, the same spikiness I got on that reminds me of the Blade and Bow, those like young spiky grain notes. Um, you know, it's worth at least, like not doing a full thing on right now, but pour out a little Blade and Bow and just grab that bottle, which is right behind me, and just smell it. May as well. And um, there's a, you know, interestingly, yeah, the, blade, uh, the blade and bow might be my, my favorite out of those. But yeah, I think the, I think the origin bottled and bond weeded bourbon from Bardstown Bourbon Company, I think it just, like I'm talking about weeders, I just think it needs a little more age and... I think it's just showing showing its youth and the price point is, is a little too high for me. And there's actually a petrol note. I don't know. This 
I hear people talk about petrol notes on certain things. Actually, with um, Jeb, you're you're the wine guy here, man. And Joe, if you're still here, uh, Rieslings, Mosul Rieslings, petrol notes on those. I, I keep hearing that mentioned. I believe in videos. I get a I get a petrol note gas, you know, on this on this Bardstown origin. Yeah. I would actually take the Blade and Bow over the Bardstown Origin. So at least the Blade and Bow wins in some comparison tonight. <clears throat> Anyways. So yeah, Tim Tam Slam. Petrol is common on Rieslings and certain sparkling wines. Okay. Thanks, Aiden. Yeah. Uh I just I just don't like that Bardstown. So I'm back to my watered-down Larceny C922. And I thought I put quite a bit of water in that. And I, th I think I did. I'll put just a little bit more. But the rumors are that Larceny Barrel Proof has been including progressively older whiskey in the blend. And I would believe that based on the way that all the 2022 batches went, with the conclusion being C922, which was, to me, so good and the best batch of all time so far. Um, I would believe there's older stuff in the mix. And based on this watered-down comparison from C922, proof down to regular larceny, I would say that the C922 is, is older. Or it's just that the blend comes off that way. It's incredible. Yeah, it's... Jeb, I like the Larceny C922 watered down. That's a good call, man. It's a little ethanol forward, even at the low proof. And and maybe that's because I really shocked it with water. I watered it down very quickly, but yeah. Well, everybody, thanks for hanging out tonight. Uh, hit that like button on your way out. I appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Obviously, a bunch of streams going on right now for, for you to check out. And so if you're still hanging out here, if you've been switching back and forth, I can't uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Blade and Bow, overpriced. Is it overrated? I don't know if it's overrated. Uh, as a Blanton's alternative, maybe. This is a store pick, so it's probably a little older or at least a more select profile. Definitely this Blanton's store pick is better than this Blade and Bow. Now, I have had my last bottle of Blanton's I actually opened, which was not a store pick, tasted like Benchmark. And it was, it was not, I couldn't drink it, and I just gave it to somebody. Um... I would say that maybe those current Blantons that are floating around, which I've been hearing rumors that they're four years old. I don't know if that's true. I've been hearing rumors, though. And if that is the case, maybe Blade and Bow is going to stand up to those a little bit better. But in this flight, Larceny, regular old Larceny is the value buy. The best thing that I had was probably the 50-50 blend of these two. Obviously, Blanton Store Pick is great, but these things can, depending on your area, just be hard to find, expensive, overpriced. Bardstown Origin, rechecking on that one, still not for me. Strong petrol note. And Larceny C922 is just amazing, whether at proof or watered down. So that's awesome. Uh, guys, no live stream Thursday night. Unfortunately, I have a concert. I played two concerts today. I have a concert Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So six concerts this week, which is, is a lot. I mean, even for me, that's a busy week. Um... But the plan is tomorrow to film some content. I have to cut the Mictors 20 review, get get all that stuff out there. And so you'll be hearing from me this week for sure on some new videos. Patrons, we have a Patreon live stream 7 p.m. Eastern time on January 27th. I know that's a ways off, but I'm just reminding you. I think that's it. So, yeah, Jeb, this week... I actually am playing Triangle this week. <laughs> I have three concerts where all I'm playing is Triangle, which is hilarious. Um, another concert I'm playing Balron, which is an Irish sort of uh, frame drum. 
playing some Balron, snare drum, bass drum, you know, different stuff like that. Like kind of a varied concert with Rhiannon and Giddens. And then today I was playing like drum set and just a bunch of stuff for these kids' concerts. So, Danielle, what's up? Hey, thanks for saying hey. It's awesome. Danielle is a fellow percussionist and an incredible percussionist at that. So, um, awesome. It's good to see you in here, Danielle. Thanks for thanks for saying hey. All right, guys, I'm going to end with this watered down Larceny C922. And that's going to wrap it up. So, cheers, and I'll I'll see y'all soon.